Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I hear from people all the time who are very frustrated by the fact that they can't get a few far-flung rooms of their home connected reliably to the rest of their network. And there are, of course, products that try to get you there without having to run new cabling like uh, power line adapters and Wi-Fi repeaters, but they often don't work all that reliably. And the one thing that I found that is an alternative to running cabling uh, is Mocha, and I've got two new Mocha adapters here from Action Tech. These are ECB 6200s, and uh, they work best in pairs, of course, because one bridges to the other. And what these do is allow you to plug your router and the rest of your network in on one end and then run that data through your cable television wiring to the other end. And then uh, you can plug a you know, Wi-Fi hotspot into here or just plug a computer directly into that. And they will bridge themselves between each other using your cable TV wires. And the best part is you don't lose your TV signal in the process. It really works exceptionally well. And this is their new 2.0 bonded version. So this is running at a much faster rate uh, than a Mocha adapter we looked at from Action Tech about a year or two ago. So uh, this is really, from a speed perspective, uh, every bit as fast as far as how much data it can transmit at a time as my Ethernet network is. And it really, I'm, I'm really impressed by how well these are going to work here. So I'm going to show you how to hook them up and then how fast they operate here in a second. I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, these came in free of charge from Action Tech. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. I'm going to keep these in the house for a little while because I'm going to use them on my own home network because they're going to solve a problem that I have and I'm going to report back in a few months and let you know how they're working over a longer period of time as well. All right, so let's get our little network built on our desk here. Now, these are sold as a pair for $120. They're identical to each other, so it doesn't matter which one you put where, uh, but you can also buy them individually for about $69 and you can have up to 16 of these on your network. So it's not just a one-to-one -one kind of connection. Uh, these can work throughout your, your a whole cable television loop in your home with up to 16 of these uh, all talking to each other and getting that network extended. Now our first step here uh, is going to be applying power and then uh, connecting my home network to this end. So this will be the one that we plug into our home router uh, with an ethernet cable here like that. It'll click in and then what we'll do here is plug it into our uh, home uh, television cable network here. So we'll just run in the coaxial cable. Uh, this will look very similar to the cable that is or should be identical to the cable that you have uh, currently plugged into your cable box. And uh, what you can do on this side is run the cable box into it. So it's got a splitter built in where it'll take uh, the coax in for its purposes and then allow you to hook your TV up to the other end. So that's a nice feature to have on there. Now on the other end, I'm going to go find my other power cable which disappeared here. Uh, we're going to pretend that this is in the remote room in our house. I'm going to connect power up here. I'm going to then plug in the uh, cable television wire into this one and presumably you have a cable television jack in each of these rooms otherwise you will need to run cable television wiring and if you have to run that it might be better to just do ethernet but you can see here they have found each other already within our uh, virtual coaxial network here and the last step now is to connect our computer that uh, will presumably be in that remote room uh, to this device so we're going to plug in ethernet into this end I'll plug the cable into a adapter here on my Mac. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is a geeky test called iPerf, and this measures bandwidth. In other words, how much data can we send at one time over our network here? And I've set up the ideal scenario for this device here to really see if it can get the gigabit speeds they're advertising because uh, this is a very short cable. I'll show you a test with some longer cables in a minute, but I wanted to just do a, a perfect world test to make sure that it is capable of what they're advertising. So what, ha what will happen here when I hit the uh, enter key is that my Mac is going to push its data out through this yellow cable. It's going to go into this Mocha box. It will then uh, take that data, push it out over the cable television wire over to the other box. This one is connected with this gray cable to my router. Also connected to my router is a computer that will get this data and tell us what it got. So let's run the test now and see what happens. So now the Mac is pushing that data over to the other one and we are able to transfer 940 megabits per second here it looks like at the same time, which is great. This is really what I would normally expect to see out of my ethernet network here at the house very fast, at least as far as how much data we can transfer at the same time, and it seems to be working quite well. So we're going to let that test finish up there, and you can see here it's registering an official score of 939 megabits per second when I transfer two gigabytes of data over. And what I'm going to do now is run a ping test, and what this will measure is uh, the response rate. In other words, how fast can we get a packet from one end to the other? So speed is not just how much data you can transfer over at a time, it's how fast those packets get back and forth. So if you're doing something like a game or something, something, uh, a lower response rate is the better response rate to get. So when I run that test, 
I'm seeing about three milliseconds, 3.6 milliseconds here uh, going over to my router. And just as a point of comparison, when I connect the Mac up directly to my Ethernet network running that same ping test to the same router, uh, I have a response rate that's about three milliseconds faster. So this is uh, adding a little bit of latency, not a lot that I think most people would even notice, uh, especially if you're just browsing the web or just trying to get some uh, web video done. Gamers might be the only ones that might notice any real difference here. It will add uh, three milliseconds to whatever ping time you might have to your servers, but uh, there is some overhead involved in getting those packets converted from Ethernet uh, to the coax cable and then back again. So there is something just to think about there. If you are very sensitive to uh, any kind of latency at all, it's going to add about three milliseconds I'm seeing uh, in my own testing. Now you may be saying, Lon, this is a bogus test. You've got three feet of cable here. How could you possibly get a real world example of this? So uh, anticipating that question, what I did is I hooked up my laptop on the other end of my home. And uh, the way they hooked up my cable television wire in this house 14 years ago before I owned it uh, was the worst possible way you could do this. So they ran a cable up from the basement that was already split like two or three times into the attic. They then split that one six times and then ran it to each of the rooms that the cable uh, jacks are hooked up into. They put cable jacks everywhere in the hallways, two in every room. I think there's one on the ceiling in one of the rooms. It's kind of crazy. And uh, every time you split a cable television signal, you're cutting the signal in half. It really uh, is a pretty uh, bad thing to split the cable too many times without an amplifier. So I've got no amplifier up there. Uh, that cable is split three 30 times to, to Sunday here. And uh, when I hooked up my laptop in that room, to my surprise, I got very similar speeds as you can see here. So I'm looking at maybe a 10 or 20 megabit per second reduction in speed overall, but uh, it really isn't any noticeable difference there. Uh, the ping rate is the same. So this seems to work, at least in my home, with some really lousy wiring strategies that were done at the time they built the house. It uh, seems to be working just fine and uh, as well as my ethernet does, at least in the standpoint of bandwidth. So I am quite pleased with uh, the performance I'm getting out of these things. And for some real world testing also, I loaded up my HD Home Run app and they are an occasional sponsor here on the channel, but I use their devices in my home to bring uh, my television signals into my computer network. One of the best ways to test how reliable a solution is is whether or not that HD Home Run works at all because it does uh, push a lot of packets over the network and if you're not getting a reliable connection, it fails very quickly. Uh, in this instance, it was working perfectly and has been working perfectly all weekend. So uh, no issues there with with reliability, no packet loss. Uh, even across the house, it seems to be uh, working quite well there. I even did some tests here with my uh, NAS drive and you can see we're getting uh, the kinds of speeds that I usually see over my ethernet uh, back and forth to my big storage array in the house here. This is a very similar speed to what I normally get when I'm just connected directly. So about 100 megabytes per second uh, in data transfers uh, using this uh, scenario here. Uh, really no issues whatsoever. Now there are a couple of gotchas to keep in mind. There always are. The first is that if you're on satellite television, this will not work with your satellite TV service, at least through its wiring, because they use the frequencies apparently that these uh, boxes require. It does work with most cable providers here in the United States. It works fine with Comcast and my testing, uh, and other folks have reported on the web that their cable providers work just fine too. In fact, a lot of cable providers use Mocha already to transfer data between devices, and that might be an issue, especially if you're on Verizon Fios. So Verizon Fios uses Mocha within your home to transfer data back and forth to its cable boxes. So that is, I believe, Mocha 1.0. And I haven't yet uh, tested this on Verizon Fios to be certain, but uh, you might have a scenario where these run at a slower speed because they're detecting uh, the prior generation boxes on the network. Now, the way Mocha 2.0 is supposed to work is that a 2.0 box talking to a 2.0 box should work at the faster speed, and then it will step down when talking to a box at the slower speed on the same network. I haven't had the ability to test that just yet because I want to see it myself. Uh, so the next time I'm in New York City, I might take these along with me and go find a friend and uh, mess around with their cable for a few hours and see what kind of uh, service we get out of these uh, two boxes there. Uh, Comcast customers should know that the cable modems that they're using now have Mocha built into them, but again, it's the slower Mocha. I don't think uh, Comcast is using Mocha too much in homes, but if, it's, if you're seeing slower speeds than what you just saw in this review, uh, log into your Comcast modem and see if Mocha is turned on. If it is, turn it off and that might solve your problem because I've seen a lot of these uh, Comcast modems just activate that by default and you probably just want to turn it off if you're not going to use it, especially if you buy the pair here to get uh, the gigabit bandwidth that you saw earlier there. So those are just a few things to keep in mind as you are setting up your Mocha network. Every home is wired differently and your mileage may vary from what you saw today, but I'm surprised because my wiring upstairs is a mess and I hooked this thing up in the most 
most remote corner that had the most splits going on, and it worked almost as well as it did uh, with the three-foot cable here. I mean, it was really a very minimal difference in performance between uh, that distance with all those cable splits and this little cable here on my desk. So I'm very pleased with this. I'll keep using it over the next couple of weeks and let you know if I have any trouble moving forward. Another thing to uh, think about is getting a filter for your overall cable television service to keep your Mocha traffic isolated to your home. You put this little filter right where your service comes in, very easy to install, $8 and change. And what that will do is uh, prevent anything from bleeding out into the rest of the neighborhood. Analog cable runs in a big loop even outside your home. And it's not so much a security concern as it could be the fact that you might hit some collisions if your neighbor is using something similar or has some other equipment on the network. This will uh, keep those frequencies clear, uh, puts a big barrier, basically a little brick wall uh, in between uh, your Mocha traffic and the rest of the world. Uh, easy investment, easy to install. Definitely get that too for the best experience. This is Lon Seibin, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you wanna help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.